you done went out and built you a home studio. You must have thought you was Dave Pensado or Wavy Wayne or something, huh? <laughs> but your mixes, your recordings, they still sounded like doo-doo. <laughs> well, stay tuned. It's all good, man. I got the top 10 home recording mistakes that hopefully you can avoid. So look, DistroKid is sponsoring the channel this month, but that's all right, because they actually have some really dope features to offer us music creators. Let's go ahead and check it out. So once I go to distrokid.com, not only can I distribute my music to all of the major platforms and some not so major platforms, <laughs> they actually give me all of my royalties from every single download and stream directly to me 100%. They don't keep any of that. That's just $19.99 per year and you get unlimited uploads. Now they also have a Musician Plus program and even a label program for y'all independent label owners, all right? They actually make it easy with the Teams feature to share their earnings with whoever collaborated on the record with you. Now that could be your uh, band members, producers, manager, whoever it is, DistroKid will pay them directly so you don't have to do any accounting. It's as simple as choosing a project after you've released it, hit next, and now every single song on that project, I can divide up the different percentages for all of the collaborators. So if I just wanna keep 100% for myself, I can do that. Or I can add my Wavy Seals fam and uh and give them uh, well i would have to enter an email address and give them you know 16 percent. and you can do this for as many people for every song as you need so that just really helps to share the wealth all right if you click the link in the description you can save another seven percent off your annual subscription to distro kid and start uploading and making money today now let's get back to the video what's up family this is wavy wayne and that's right it's more than 10 mistakes that's being made, but I'm gonna drop my top 10 mistakes that I see um, engineers making every single day. And hopefully we as a community can avoid those and be better, man, with our home recordings, okay? Now, even though you got this home studio built, I definitely recommend that you get some professional mixing services, but to even get that professional mixing service to a point that's professional, right? We need to make sure that our recordings are at a level that can be acceptable to a professional. So um, check out these 10 tips. And if you want me to touch your record, definitely check out these 10 tips. And then hit me up, shoot me an email, or visit wavywayne.com where you can get you some professional mixing done, all right? So let's jump right into these top 10 home recording mistakes. One of the first mistakes is pretty common. And that's having your preamp gain turned up way too high, all right? Now that's the volume of the input level of the microphone, okay? Having that turn up too high is gonna cause distortion in your record, um, and, and this is just something that we can't fix. So let's take a look at Pro Tools and see how we would set our gain level, all right? Well, before we even look at Pro Tools, let me just go over to my console app, okay? First thing first, is uh, make sure that what you, when you're looking at your meter and any type of meter and system, and we have similar meters and Pro Tools as well, but I'm just looking at my UAD console app. It don't matter what kind of uh, interface you're using, this is all gonna relate, okay, trust me. So negative six dB is about where we want our input level to be on average. We don't, that way we still have a little headroom at the top and we're also away from the noise floor, okay? So um, let me just give a little test here. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. You see, once I start clipping, that's gonna be a little too loud. So what I'm gonna do is just back this off a little bit. And I can't really see it that good, but mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. And that's actually pretty good. And you know what? Even if you are a little bit less than that negative 6 dB, that's cool. As long as you're recording at 24-bit nowadays, we don't really need to record so loud. So really, in the 24-bit world, there's no reason for us to be clipping on our input, okay? So keep that input level down and avoid clipping. Now, 
let's just take a look at what this would look like in Pro Tools in case you didn't have any external meters to look at. If I just make a new mono audio track, and once I record and enable this track, we can see here in Pro Tools, here's my negative six meter, right? So we want to always be looking at your meters. Always be looking at your meters while you are recording and be wary of any adjustments that you may need to make. So, yo, 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 check, one, check, two, one, two, check, one, check, two. Now that level is a little bit low, but like I said, we don't necessarily need to have it cranked all the way up just in case um, I get a little excited or you get a little excited. We want to stay away from clipping. So that actually is a pretty great level right there. I'm averaging right about that negative six dB on my input and that's going to get us a good clean level. So tip number one, make sure that your microphone level is not too hot, not too loud on the preamp. We don't want distortion. That's going to kill everything. The second mistake y'all be making out here is actually having your gain too low, okay? Now, if that microphone input level is turned down way too low and we record it, right? Now, what we have to consider in our session, especially in our untreated environment, is that when we turn down too low and then we later start adding compression and, and turning stuff up, limiting and EQing and stuff like that, the noise floor is also going to raise. So if I record my, my vocal level too low into my DAW, when I want to turn that up, then every other thing is getting turned up. All the room noise, my baby brother crying in the room next door, all of that stuff is getting turned up. So make sure that you, again, you're not recording too loud, but also you don't want to be recording too quietly. Remember that sweet spot is about that negative 6 dB, but again, it can be a little bit lower to that, but you just don't want to be super quiet. And then we later have to use clip gain or something to turn it all up, all right? Let me give you an example of this because I actually just um, did a, a mix session with somebody and, and their, their levels were way too low. So um, let's say if I record this like this, Yo, 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 here I go, about to bust a crazy flow. I'm Wavy Wayne, busting in the dough. Yeah. All right. Now, you can even see visually that that level is too low when we are recording. <laughs> what y'all would do is just go to this clip game and jack it up. All right. But you see, when I do that, you can even see all of this other noise, right, is being brought up with that. And we can, we can see that. So um, there's no way to kind of isolate just that vocal and turn that up. Everything is getting turned up. The reflections in the room, the, the air conditioner, all of that. So make sure that you're recording at a proper level. Another mistake that I see y'all making a lot is actually, and I talked about this on my last video briefly, is having the microphone face the wrong way. All right. Now, microphones all have a pattern, a pickup pattern, right? Now, it depends on whether that microphone is cardioid or omni or figure eight or uh, whatever the pattern of your microphone is. OK, you need to know and understand that pattern. This microphone that I'm using, the Shure KSM 27, is a cardioid pattern microphone, meaning that it picks up things that are in front of it and to the sides. OK. So anything that's in front of the microphone and to the sides of it is going to be received by the microphone. It rejects sound coming from the back of the microphone. So if by any reason I accidentally turn this microphone around um, and have it facing the wrong way, then I'm going to be talking into or rapping or singing into the part of the microphone that's actually rejecting the sound. And what you get is this muffled kind of off sound that just sounds crazy and you can't figure out why you spent $500 on this microphone and it sounds like crap. And oftentimes it's just simple as making sure that you are facing the right side of the microphone. So if you're not sure on which face of the microphone to be pointing at, read the owner's manual. When you buy the microphone, it will tell you, hey, this is the front of the microphone. This is the polar pattern of the microphone. This is how you should address the microphone. Some microphones are different. Some microphones are front address. Some microphones are side address. Some microphones are top address or, or whatever, meaning how you need to have that microphone, right? I have, um, for example, my uh, Shure 
um, what's that microphone I use all the time? The SM7B. That is a front address microphone. If I had it up, um, standing up straight and tried to address it sideways, then that wouldn't give me the best possible sound. So know your microphone, and sometimes that's just as simple as reading the owner's manual. And if you don't have the owner's manual, experiment with the, with the microphone, okay? Use your ears and listen to see where it sounds best. If you feel like, hey, the way this mic is set up ain't giving me the best sound, flip it around and see maybe if it'll sound better when you do that. On the other hand too, some microphones allow you to adjust the polar pattern. So um, find the polar pattern that works best for you. If you are recording um, with an omnidirectional microphone, meaning it's picking up everything around you, especially if you are in like a, a home studio environment, you probably don't wanna be picking up everything that's going on around you. You want something that's more hypercardioid uh, focused on what the, the source is in front of it. So uh, be aware of that, learn about your polar patterns and make sure that you are facing the right side of the microphone. The next mistake that y'all be making in no particular order is just having the hardware buffer size turned up too high. Now, if you watched any of my previous videos on how to record, then you know that the hardware buffer size should be set high for mixing and low for recording. The hardware buffer size determines the amount of information basically that your computer is gonna process at one time, okay? Now, high hardware buffer sizes allow you to have more tracks in the session and use more plugins to, and, and the computer can process all of that information. But with that high hardware buffer size, you also increase the latency um, on that track. And latency basically is the time that it takes for the signal to travel from the microphone through your interface and then out to the headphones or your monitors, okay? Now there's, there's a time delay there and, and the longer that time is, especially if you have headphones on trying to listen to yourself back, it's gonna be very annoying. So we want to reduce that latency at all costs and so while we are recording, we wanna make sure we're using a low hardware buffer size. To set your hardware buffer size, you go to in Pro Tools, and if you're using a different DAW, read the owner's manual and find out how you can set the hardware buffer size, man. I'm telling you, I read this fundamental, okay? They put that paperwork in there, they put it in there for a reason. So, I'm gonna go to Setup, Playback Engine, and right now my playback, my hardware buffer size is set perfectly for recording, 128 samples. That's why I like to keep mine while I am recording. Um, and basically what that does is gives me enough processing power to run any uh, plugins that might be in my template, but also it reduces the latency low enough that the artist does not um, uh, hear it and they can't uh, tell that there's any latency happening basically, okay? While I'm mixing though, I'll go and change my hardware buffer size to either 512 samples or 1024 samples. And that's gonna give me more greater processing power so I can add more tracks and more plugins and do more processing, okay? But while you are recording, keep the hardware buffer size low. It's gonna make for a much better recording experience. The next mistake that I see a lot of uh, engineers making all the time is just having the microphone too close to the wall. Now, we've talked about this before, um, and you see that I have this reflection filter. This reflection filter is actually gonna help me in my recording situation from, to stop those reflections that are gonna be bouncing off the walls that are nearest to me um, from entering my microphone. Again, we just talked about the, the polar pattern of this microphone, how it picks up anything coming from the sides, um, and it's, it's, also, it's getting a little bit of stuff coming from the back too, obviously, but we wanna minimize those reflections at all costs. So the closer you are to the wall, the faster those reflections are gonna come back to your microphone and interfere with your recording. So try to stay away from the wall. If you have no choice but to be near a wall, you need to put some absorbative materials on the walls close to where your microphone is, some type of acoustic treatment to absorb those reflections so they're not immediately bouncing back into your microphone, okay? So um, that, that's just another tip for y'all. Keep the microphone in a good placement in your room. Now this next mistake is pretty funny, man. Now, I'm sorry to make fun of y'all, man. Look, man, if y'all wanna get made fun of, then don't watch my channel, cause I'm gonna make fun of you, but then I'm gonna teach you something too, all right? Now I see y'all be doing this, right? We got one mono, let me break it down. First, mono means one, one channel of audio. Stereo is two channels of audio. 
I see so many newbies out here recording a mono source onto a stereo track in their, in their DAW and wondering why the hell it sounds crazy or why is it only coming out the left side. Well, genius, <laughs> stereo tracks need two input sources and if you just have a mono microphone, right, it's one microphone, unless it's a stereo uh, microphone, right, um, and you'll know if you have that and I guarantee you don't, okay. Um, then you need to just create a mono track in Pro Tools. Let me show y'all what this looks like when somebody does uh, create a stereo track. So if I, I'm going to create a stereo track. And when I record and enable this track, if we look, you can see on my meters here, I'm only getting something on the left side, right? And then so if I start recording, turn this up a little bit. Hey yo, hey yo, this is Wavy Wayne coming through with Plain Jane and he making fun of me because my recordings is doo doo. Okay. <laughs> so now you see that I have this recording and it's only on the left channel, right? You see, you got this whole right channel. If your recordings look like this at all, you're making a mistake, okay? Um, you're recording a mono audio onto a stereo track. When you got one microphone, one XLR cable, you're using one input on your audio interface, that's a mono source. You need a mono track, one mono audio track, okay? Now, if you did make this mistake and you recorded some heat, let me show you how you can fix that. You could just simply go to the track in Pro Tools, you can right click on the nameplate and hit split into mono. And what this is gonna do is give you two new mono tracks with one left channel information, one right, and you can basically get rid of these other tracks now, that's a pro level tip right there. We can just get rid of those, boom, and then we left with our true mono track, but you don't wanna have to do all that work, so just do it right the first time. Record mono sources on mono tracks. The next mistake that I hear often when I, when I receive y'all records to mix um, is just being too close to the microphone. Now, there is a proximity effect that is happening. When you are too close to the microphone, the, the microphone starts to pick up more of your lows on those vocals. So let's see. Now, let's see. First, first thing first, we're supposed to keep our pop filter about a fist distance away from the microphone, right? Now that automatically is going to give you the, a nice amount of space away from the microphone and then you should be about another fist distance at least away from that microphone. So ultimately you want to be about 12 inches from the microphone and again a lot of times the user manual will tell you what exactly is a good distance to be away from your mic. So but sometimes man y'all will just have that pop filter placed right up on the mic and then you get up on it and then it sounds like this. And yo, 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 I'm getting all of this low end extra frequencies and stuff. So let's avoid that, okay? And when you're too close to the microphone, you start to get that proximity effect. Unless that's something that you want, right? If I'm going for this real uh, Barry White kind of tone and I want to get sexy, baby, then get a little closer to the microphone so that more of those low frequencies are received by the microphone, okay? But you definitely don't want to be too close to the microphone. And on the same uh, uh, tip, you don't even want to be too far away from the microphone. Find that sweet spot. And normally, again, it's about 12 inches away from the actual microphone with a pop filter about, you know, uh, six inches away from the microphone capsule itself, okay? Um, again, that can be found in your, your owner's manual or the microphone, what's the, the sweet spot that the manufacturer recommends for you to be. The next mistake that y'all are making a lot is not considering the amount of room noise that is happening, okay? If you have an air conditioner or a heater or something like that, you have to turn that off. You, you should turn that off while you record it because all of that noise, that fan noise is going to get into the mic, into your recordings, and it's just going to sound dirty and, and we don't want that, okay? Um, if somebody is, has a TV next uh, in the room next to you or radio or whatever, if you're living in a noisy environment, try to find a quiet time uh, to do your recording. Maybe you got to stay up late at night and, and do your recording when everybody else is asleep. Um, but yes, consider the room noise. If you can hear it in the room, the microphone can hear it as well. So that includes anything, all right? You think about that and minimize your room noise as much as possible, right? And that, that includes even just reflectiveness, right? This room that I'm in right now, 
it's pretty reflective. So um, once I start to really do some serious recording, I'm going to have to think about some more type of acoustic treatment to kind of isolate um, my microphone away from all the reflections that's happening um, in case a truck drive down the street <clears throat> or anything like that. Try to minimize your room noise and that will get you cleaner recordings um, very easily. The next mistake that I see a lot of y'all making is using too much compression or EQ as you're recording in. Now this may not apply to some of y'all, but for those of you who, who, who it does apply to, remember that if you are recording in effects, maybe you have a hardware compressor, a hardware EQ, I'm not sure what kind of gear you're using in your studio, maybe you got the Avalon or some kind of Focusrite um, channel strip or whatever it is that you're using. If you over compress uh, going into your DAW, if you um, take out too many frequencies uh, going into your DAW, boost them too much, you cannot get that back. Once it's recorded like that, you're stuck like that, okay? So I would err on the side of caution, and if you're not very experienced with using compression as you're recording in, then stay away from it, man. And you can always add these effects later. You can always go back and touch it up later. Um, but if you record it in over compress or over EQ, then you pretty much screwed yourself yourself over and, and that, that record is going to be a dud or you're going to have to do a whole lot of work to try to get it back to a workable uh, place. Let me just give y'all an example of what I'm talking about. Using the UAD console app, we have the ability to record um, using insert effects and, I'm, and I keep mine turned on, all right? But uh, and that's using this little button right here. But if I go over here and let's just say I'm using some dynamics maybe i will uh let's use the distressor <laughs> this is a good one then. all right so now you see i'm getting hella too much compressor now this is definitely an extreme example but we can see how hard i'm hitting that compressor and i'm getting about 26 db or more of gain reduction because i cranked it all the way up but even this is too much yeah you don't want that right now once i record a signal like this it's going to be stuck like that ain't nothing i can do um and again i never really use eq while i'm uh, recording if anything i'll just use a high pass filter and roll off at about 70 hertz um other than that I don't, i'm not trying to eq as i'm recording in especially for us beginners, stay away from using EQ. And if you're gonna use compression, make sure it's very, very light compression. And I recommend using like a slower compressor like a um, LA-2A or something like that um, as you are recording in, okay? The last mistake that I see a lot of new engineers making and probably the most important is not using the right tools in the studio. And those tools are your ears, man, you got to use your ears, okay? If you're not using your ears and you're relying on your gear, you're going to play yourself somewhere. Don't take all of my advice so literally. Don't just do exactly what Wavy Wayne said because your situation may be different. You need to use your ears. Listen to what it is that you're recording. Listen to the source. Listen to how it sounds. Figure out what the problem could be on your own based on what you are hearing Try to analyze it and fix that, okay? This is the best piece of gear that you have is your ears. Um, so protect them, <laughs> for one, and use them when you're in the studio, okay? I can't, I can't break it down no more than that, man. Use your ears, listen, and analyze everything, and then help use what you've uh, heard to help you make your decisions going forward, all right? If you found this video helpful at all, make sure you thumbs up, like, and subscribe to your boy. And of course, you know I got the dopest templates on the interwebs, baby. Visit wavywayne.com where you can cop your custom Pro Tools recording and mixing templates. And you can also hit me up for a professional mix. But make sure you follow these tips, though, because I don't want to have to send it back and be like, hey, man look at this video. <laughs> all right. So don't make these mistakes. And uh, yeah, man, go home and do some recordings, make them dope, and uh, hit me up, all right? Be dope.